Welcome to the setup and configuration video for the Atlona AT-OME MS42. It's a 4x2 matrix switcher with HDMI, USB-C, and DisplayPort inputs, plus HDMI and HDBase-T outputs. In this video, we're going to walk through the web GUI interface. The MS42 is shipped with DHCP enabled. Once connected to a network, the DHCP server, if available, will automatically assign an IP address for the unit. If the MS42 is unable to detect a DHCP server within 15 seconds, then the unit will use a self-assigned IP address within the range of 169.254. You can use an IP scanner along with the MAC address on the bottom of the unit to identify the unit on the network. If a static IP address is desired, the unit can be switched to static IP mode. The default static IP address is 192.168.1.254. Use the IP mode button on the back of the unit to change the mode between DHCP and static. The number of flashes tell you what mode the device is in. Four flashes is DHCP mode, and two flashes is the factory static IP set to 192.168.1.254. If you connect the MS42 to a display on the HDMI out, you can press and release the IP mode and it will display the IP address on the screen. The default username and password is admin at Lona with a capital A. You'll notice when you log in, the warning to change your password away from the default. This is to make certain your equipment can't be messed with and is highly encouraged. This page also gives information about the firmware version, active input, signal types, video formats, aspect ratio, color space, and color depth. The next page is the AV settings page. This page is divided into three sections, video, audio, and HDCP. The video section provides controls for switching modes and input selection. The MS42 features three switching modes, mirrored, matrix mode, and matrix mode with static route. Switching modes can be configured using the built-in web server. Mirrored mode is the default mode. Once video is detected on any of the input ports, the output signal will be displayed on both the HDMI out and the HDBase-T out ports. Matrix mode allows the MS42 to independently switch between any input to any output. Auto switching is disabled in matrix mode. The MS42 will automatically switch to another input if the signal is disrupted on the current active input. The port to be switched to is defined in the fallback input dropdown list. The default fallback port is previous. The fallback input is if the source is disconnected from the active input, then the switcher can be configured to automatically switch to the desired port. The scaler, when set to the on position, 4K content will be downscaled to 1080p. When it's set to the off position, the output resolution and timing can be the same as the input source. The default setting is on. The audio section provides options to control the output audio volume and de-embedding. The HDCP section controls whether HDCP content is allowed to pass. Each input provides control of how HDCP content is handled. Some source devices will send HDCP content if the HDCP compliant display or sync is detected. However, there are many applications where sending HDCP content is not desired. Setting the port to the off position will instruct the source to send non-HDCP content to the display. Note that not all sources have this capability. This page provides controls for the CEC, device timers, and configuration for controlling external devices. This page is not available when switching mode is set to matrix mode. Display control is disabled when matrix mode is active. CEC, or Consumer Electronics Control, sends power on and off to the display. 
Atlona has confirmed proper CEC functionality with several current models of Samsung, Panasonic, and Sony displays. However, it is not guaranteed that CEC will work with all displays. Many manufacturers do not support CEC off commands, and older displays use proprietary commands. Atlona only supports displays that use the CEC command structure defined in HDMI 1.2a. Display Auto Power On allows the MS42 to send the Power On command to the display when the AV signal is detected. When the AV signal is no longer present, the MS42 will send the Power Off command to the display. If this feature is not desired, then it is set to disabled. The feature is disabled by default. Auto Power Off Timer sets the time interval between the command to power off the display is sent and when the AV signal is no longer present. The default value is 15 seconds, but available values are from 15 seconds to 15 minutes. Lamp Cooldown Timer sets the projector lamp cooldown timer in seconds. This value specifies the time interval that must elapse after the display control off command is sent before the display power on command can be sent. This feature is used to prevent the projector from missing a power on command while the lamps are cooling. Available values are 10 seconds to 15 minutes with default settings of 10 seconds. Display warm up timer is the same as the cooldown timer, except it looks at the timing of the warm up of the display or projector. It will delay the ability to send the off command until the unit is completely warmed up. You can choose from a few control types. CEC is the default, but you can also select IP or RS-232. When you choose one of these types, more fields will become available. When you set the control type to RS-232, you will be able to select which RS-232 mode you will use. The HDBase-T RS-232 passes the RS-232 codes through the receiver to the display or the local RS-232 connection on the switcher. You can also enable the repeat command to determine the number of times it needs to be repeated. This is because some devices may require that the command be sent multiple times before an acknowledge message is sent back. Then you can set the manufacturer, product, and model. We have a lot of common displays and projectors. However, if you know the protocol for your device, you can also create your own commands and test them by using the send. To learn more about the types of strings and how to use them, locate the manual under the resource tab on the product page for the MS42. If you select IP control type, you will then be given the fields for connecting your device using TCP IP. Non-login basically means that there's no authentication or user password required to access this device. If you select the login, you will want to fill in those fields. You will also need to know the IP address and port that is to be used to talk to the device. The occupancy control is for use with our OCS 900N network occupancy sensor. You will need the IP address of your OCS and we talk to it on port 9000, which is already filled in. Under the RS-232 page, you can set the RS-232 over HDBase-T, and it converts TCP IP commands to RS-232 commands for output to external devices over HDBase-T. It also enables a single IP connection to the control processor to control both IP and RS-232 connected devices at remote endpoints. The RS-232 console is the setting that allows the control system to control the switcher and other devices using RS-232. Before a source can send picture and sound to a display device, the source reads the EDID, or Extended Display Identification Data, stored in the display. The EDID contains information about what type of video and audio formats are supported by the display. The MS-42 can use either downstream EDID from the display or use a built-in EDID preset. EDID data can also be stored in any one of three EDID presets. By default, the MS-42 can read the EDID from the device. 
The term downstream is used to describe any device that receives a signal from another device. For example, if a Blu-ray player is connected to a display, the display is said to be downstream of the Blu-ray player. The MS-42 provides the option of selecting a preset EDID. One reason you might want a preset EDID is because it will force the input to use an EDID to make the content easier to see. This happens often with laptops and computers sharing things like spreadsheets and detailed content. You can also retrieve the EDID from a display. It can be stored in one of the memory locations and be used later. You simply connect the display directly to the HDMI output of the MS-42. The MS-42 provides three different USB modes, follow USB, manual, and follow video. Follow USB is the default mode and functions like auto switching for video. In this mode, the MS-42 will detect which USB ports are connected to the host device. If both USB host ports are connected to host devices, then the MS-42 will set the last connected USB host device as the active USB host. Manual mode provides manual selection of the USB host port which is to be used. This can be set to host 1, host 2, or USB-C. In follow mode, each video input can be assigned either USB 1 or USB 2 host ports. This mode locks the USB host device to the desired video input. Each host device will have access to the same host devices when video switching occurs. Follow video mode is not available when the MS-42 is set to either matrix mode or matrix mode with static route. The MS-42 uses the internal clock to store the current date and time. The time can be set using either the local time or by assigning a network time protocol or NTP server. The MS-42 also provides the option to adjust the internal clock to compensate for daylight savings time, depending on the region. Daylight savings time is disabled by default. Under the Config tab, you can change the administrator password. The password applies to both the web server and the Telnet sessions. Note that the username admin cannot be changed. Under the System tab, you can change the network IP mode and the static IP address. By default, the MS-42 is set to DHCP mode. Once connected to a network, and if a DHCP server is found or available, the MS-42 will be assigned an IP address on the network and no further network configuration is required. However, if the MS-42 is unable to detect a DHCP server within 15 seconds, then the unit will use the self-assigned IP address within the range of 169.254. You can set the static IP if you know the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway that you'd like for it to be set to. We encourage you to talk to the IT administrator before changing this information. Typically, the Telnet service is assigned to TCP port 23. However, depending on the network environment, the default Telnet port can be changed. The MS-42 provides the option to prompt the user credentials or bypass authentication before the Telnet session. This credentials prompt option can be enabled or disabled. When prompting for the user credentials, use the same login information required by the built-in web server. When a Telnet session is active, the MS-42 can be set to monitor Telnet activity. If there's no activity within a specified time interval, the Telnet session will be automatically terminated, adding a measure of security. It can be set to values from 1 to 10,000 seconds, or 2.76 hours. If never is selected, then the Telnet port will stay open until the Telnet session is manually terminated. By default, the MS-42 is assigned a host name. You can change the host name, but we recommend that you follow standard best practices and host name rules that include using lowercase, making it unique, but be consistent for your network. No hyphens at the beginning or end, and avoid special characters, except for the underscore, which is often used to separate words in a host name. Finally, 802.1x 
is a server-based port authentication protocol which restricts unauthorized or rogue clients from connecting to the local area network or LAN through a public port. In its simplest form, 8021X usually involves three parties, the client device, the authenticator or ethernet switch, and the authentication server. If the device passes the authentication process, then the authentication server notifies the switch and allows the client to access the LAN. We have three authentication methods, protected EAP, TLS, and tunnel TLS. Talk to your IT administrator to gain the proper information for the 802.1x authentication settings. In this section, you can choose to lock the front panel so that people can't make changes. You can reset to factory, which can also be done by holding down the reset button on the back of the MS-42. You can update the firmware, but you first need to download it from the website. And the same is true for the Velocity database that we use for IP and RS-232 commands. You can also download log files for use with our support team. For more information on the ATOME MS-42, you can go to the product page at www.atlona.com.